Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends, today we find ourselves in a futuristic cold war where we are runners hacking into things. Today we're taking a look at a Thunderworks game called Metro Runner. No, this is not a role player tale like most of the games of theirs I cover. This is a standalone game in a different universe, which I love this universe, spoiler. Uh, so Metro Runner, let me show you how this game works. I'll see you on the other side. In Metro Runner, you're gonna be one of these characters. You can get a feel for the futuristic and cool looking artwork here. And of course, everyone has an asymmetric sort of special ability when hacking, which is a very important part of the game. And once you have your character, you'll have a player board of your color. You're gonna start with some assets, resources of cubes, and you're gonna start with some jobs here that you're gonna be trying to complete throughout the game. Now here's most of the main board and it's laid out in different areas, downtown, the Heights, south side, waterfront, market square. And you're gonna be moving around here like a rondelle, taking actions on your turn. So what are you trying to do? You're gonna to try to have the most points in the end and you're gonna be getting points from completing jobs like being in downtown and giving these resources, these assets for from the red district, one black, one blue, one yellow, one purple. This one only needs one of these three, but it's only two points, so this one's seven points. As you basically move around and pick up these assets, you're gonna be dropping them off, using the rondelle to get there. You're also gonna get points if you fulfill these contracts by the end of the game. Like this one is if you have a contract that ha or a job that has like red from downtown or and another one from black. This one is actually wild. If they're together, meaning in the same column once you finish them, you will get this, uh, this three points. These are not races. Anyone that gets these can get them by the end of the game. So you're getting jobs and you're also trying to match them with other jobs. Now let's just say that we had the right amount of resource assets for this and we were in the right space to do this. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And we finished this job. Now a few different things are gonna happen, but we do have this job here. Now notice that we have one red here. If we put, we have three slots. If we ended up putting a, a job here that is the black color from the south side here, then we would have red and black in the same column. And we would be able to fulfill this, which would be three points in the, the game. These are contracts. These are jobs. Over the course of the game, you're going to be moving down a influence track and a notoriety track. And you'll get a certain amount of points depending on how far your market is as well. We'll talk about how you move up these tracks a little bit later. And you're also trying to get a majority of your home district. This is purple. If I have a majority of these purple jobs completed below my, uh, my, my board at the end of the game, I'm going to get five points for that. Now on your turn, you're simply going to be moving around this rondelle. By default, you can move one or two spaces for free and then take the action that's in. There's only a few different actions on this side of the board. Uh, you can move further. You spend a cube for any one after that. You can always discard a single job card you have not completed to act as a cube. So essentially you could go two and then spend a card to move another one, spend go two and spend a bunch of cubes and move further. Uh, but when you move, you can take an action. Like this one is getting any colored cube. You just take that. Now you have a max of 10. Here's getting two, uh, two jobs. And that's getting any two of these that are here or off the top. Now when in a district, instead of doing the location action, you can do the district action. So if I'm in any of these purple spots or this one, because it's considered to be in both purple and black here, I could take this. It's one purple cube or I can complete a job that's purple. So let's say I had this, I need a purple, yellow, and black, and I do have those. Now, once per turn, you can get rid of a job card as one cube. So if I didn't have yellow and I had an extra job card, I can get rid of that instead. So what I would do is I would spend these back to the supply and I would complete this job card and I'm gonna put it below one of these columns here. Now, previously I had already done this one. I have red here. Now we see for the end game goals, red needs to be with either blue and purple or just black. Well, this one's purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it just like this. Now, we have that there. At the end of the game, I'm gonna get two points for that, but I get this ability that's just here, which is moving up one of the tracks, the influence. Now I'll go here again. This is how many points you'll get at the end of the game. You're gonna unlock some things. I just unlocked this. I'll talk about this in just a moment. But many of these have ongoing abilities. This is the starting card, so it didn't. So this says anytime uh, I can use a red cube as anything. So anytime I'm spending things, I can get it. So I'm always gonna be wanting to get red cubes, for example. So typically on your turn again, you're moving one or two or more if you want to spend more cubes, and then you're doing either the location action or the district action. Uh, now, so here I could have done a I could have done the district action for either of these two districts because that's where I was. Would have been the next player's turn, but let's say next player I go I go here on this turn. This is hack. It matches the skull there. This this is one of the main parts of the game. Now here, look at this. There's two possible cards here. I need to get a path from this spot off the board to this spot, or from here to here. 
And we're gonna be doing, doing it using this sort of puzzle here. Also, uh, if I want to, I can cycle one of these cards, putting it at the bottom of the deck, and giving a new puzzle coming up. Let's say we wanted to do this one. I need to come from up here and go straight down through to the bottom. Now you get two movements or manipulations for free. One of those can be our special ability, which is rotate any two tiles in the same column. We're normally rotating one tile as a manipulation. So for, for that ability, it's just one manipulation it counts for, but I get to do something like this, and that's just one of the two free manipulations. Another one is rotating 90 degrees in either direction, and another one is just swapping like this. You can also do what's called a shift, which is kind of like you would shift this over, which is shifts this down like this and like that. That also does it, so now I have it. I have completed this. And since I did complete this, I get this, which is moving up on the notoriety track. This is gonna allow us to get more cubes as we go to spots around the board. Instead of just taking one, I get to take two. Sometimes I'll get to take three. Again, this is also gonna be points at the end of the game, but I also get a credit. These are credits, I'd get another one of these. The credits you're spending on your turn to do all sorts of different things, like going to any location, recycling some of the jobs, uh, essentially increasing your influence or your notoriety, which is either less, or as you take an action, you can take a second different available action as well. So you can spend those to do different things. Another thing is you can unlock things. Like remember I unlocked this earlier, and that allowed me to move this from locked to unlocked, which meant when I did this, if I also got this path to connect to that path, I would have also gotten this reward, which is any cube. Either way, when I'm done with this, it's gonna flip over and it's going to give certain resources or assets to certain districts, like a yellow cube here. And simply what this means is if someone takes this district action, they're gonna get a blue cube and complete a blue project. Then afterwards, they get to take cubes that are here. It helps seed the boards for more, more interest and more excitability. Then the game will continue until anyone passes one of these lines or someone has completed nine job cards or the job deck runs out. Then you're gonna finish the points. Remember, all of these that you fulfilled, you get points for. All the jobs you fulfilled, you get points for. Plus, if you have a majority of completed jobs in your home district as well. You'll also be getting points for where you are on this track, and there'll be some leftover points for certain leftover resources. Whoever is the most is the winner. There's also a full, robust solo AI mode as well. All right, let's first talk about what I like about this. First of all, Thunderworks Games, uh, gosh, a smaller company, but they've really always put out great titles. Um, now, spo uh, not spoiler, but disclaimer, I have done some uh, official rules videos for them in the past, so they have been... Uh, a supporter of the channel in that way, so I wanted to just close that relationship with them. But they do, uh, Keith, the owner, he, I mean, geez, even from his one of his first design games as like uh, with the frogs and such, he has done a lot of great things. He did not design this one, but he's the publisher of Thunderworks, and they, they tend to do great stuff, great production, great art, uh, great games. This one is no different. The artwork in here is stunning. It looks awesome, that futuristic look. The look and feel of the game, just it just looks cool. It looks cool on the shelf, it looks cool on the table, and most of their games look this way, so it's good, I mean. Let's get to gameplay. I'm a big fan of rondelles. I always like those where you're moving around and you're, you 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 see certain actions and you kind of like, oh, if you miss one, you kind of have to come around to it again. I, I, I typically like rondelles. This one's done really well because it, with the rondelle, you're... You're going around, but you're going around different districts. And depending on which district you're in will depend on, like, will, will tell you what you can do, right? If you want to complete a project, you're going to need to go on one of the spaces that's hovering around a project that's from that district. So, like, you're working on things and you're trying to get enough resources and cubes to basically, you know, finish the project, but you've got to do it, you've got to time that right so that right when you get the right stuff, you're getting there and doing it and getting the abilities. So the rondelle is interesting also that you can jump over other people so that gives you an opportunity to go somewhere you think someone just behind you might want to go it kind of blocks that spot because they have to hop over you so i like that i like that a lot uh, i like the manipulation and the, the sort of the flexibility of discarding a job card because a lot of times you're you're getting certain things you can move one or two uh, or in the hacking you get two move two two hack movements but in those, typically you can spend one of those resource cubes in order to do more of that thing. But you can always discard a job card in order to do that. And I really like that because a lot of times you're concentrating on these job cards, you're not often going, it's not like, you're not often going and be like, oh, I gotta get more job cards, gotta get more job cards. Usually you're trying to finish those ones and then eventually you'll come around and get some more, right? But I like that going to the job card uh, area not only does it allow you to get job cards that you don't wanna complete, but you can also take some that other people want uh, because it's their color, for example, because obviously you get bonuses for, for, for having the most of your color jobs done. 
So you take ones that other people want that you don't even want, but you can use those as a sort of resource to discard and do more powerful actions with. And I like that flexibility because it gives you more reasons to go to the job sites to get more jobs. It gives you more reason to hate draft from other people. And it's not just a dead card. You can use it to do extra good things. And I like that aspect of this. I like the timing of completing the jobs in the respective color. Again, trying to time when you're getting these right resources for the right thing to get there, right? You don't want to be done with all your stuff and have to come all the way around, right? Because you have a max limit of, of resource cubes that you can hold if you're working on multiple projects. You might not be able to hold all of those to be able to you know, do both of them. So you're trying to time when you're getting things right at the right time where you're getting ready to, the, to, to get on the, the, the line of that district that you can do it. So there's a lot of planning and timing of going around that rondelle, managing your resources and figure out when can you unload all these to finish the project. I like that. Uh, this game is very tactical. This is, you're going to have a plan and you're going to need to know right now. And you're also going to have to take the opportunities that the board and the other players present to you as to what's available. You're going to have to change your plans often. And you definitely have to change your plans to hack things because that's going to be changing throughout, throughout the aspect of things. The hacking thing is going to be a make or break for this game because it is like one of the main mechanisms of the game. It's one of the main things you're trying to do. And it is a very special, a specific puzzle. You know, it's like that little slider puzzle when you're a kid where you slide things around, you try to get things to line up. I like those. I like the puzzle here. If you don't like that style puzzle, that is one of the main mechanisms of the game, one of the main objectives of the game that you're gonna be doing over and over. If you don't like that slide puzzle, you can't see it, this, probably, this game's probably not gonna be for you. Uh, I like that you have the special abilities when hacking. Everyone gets their special thing you can do. You might be able to just swap any two for free. Swap the, something from the left column and the right column. Maybe swap the skull with any other thing, things like that. I like that it gives you something special that you can do that gives you a trick up your sleep. It still costs you one of the two manipulations of the, of the hack that you get for free for your turn. But I like that, that everyone has a little bit of asymmetry there. The engine building abilities is really cool of the job. So you've got these jobs, you're finishing them, you're sliding them under a slot, and you're getting the, the ability of that slot, right? Sometimes you're doing it because you want that ability to move up on a track that's going to unlock something or get you more points, maybe end the game. But you're also doing it trying to make sure that you have the right job colors under the right column to get those game end uh, points, the completed, the, the, the sort of the completed, uh, I forget exactly what they're called, uh, you know, get those, those points at the end of the game where some of them you need three colors, some of them you need two colors. So I like that. The engine building here, and, and you have all of those abilities, you have these ongoing building, uh, abilities of engine building, that part felt so much like a, a popular engine building game that I think is out of print called Gizmos, where it's like, hey, every time you take a blue cube, you get another blue cube, or you get any cube, or like all these things of like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to put this here, I'm gonna, now for all the time, I'm going to go, hey, I get to choose what, what cube color I'm getting, I'm getting blue, you know why? Because it's going to get me another blue, right? You get all these things so much reminded me of Gizmos, a fantastic game. Um, I'd be surprised if that didn't inspire that aspect of this game from, the, from this designer. I like that you're set collecting jobs for the contracts, that's what they're called. The contracts where you're getting two or three under the same uh, column to try to finish those for end game points. I like that the, you, you have these boosts with credits and timing those for the right turn really matter. It can make you move to any spot on the board. Maybe you can do more hacks. You can you know, do all these different things. I like that you're, you're, you're sort of hoarding these things and waiting for the right time to use those uh, to have a big turn. I like that. The game is tense and tactical. I like you're trying to unlock the alpha and beta hacks, which gives it a good arc to the game. Because at, at the beginning, you're just doing the main hack. Then as the game goes on and you unlock things, you're like, oh gosh, I, I want to do this, but I just want to link these together. And you can do more and more, which gives you more rewards, which gives you more things. And it's like a snowball, a snowball of abilities and such. And I like that, that the game gets even more exciting as the game goes on to the end, which means it gets faster because you're moving up these tracks, which is one of the end game conditions. It's really good. Uh, I like that you can manipulate the end game with those tracks. So you might purposely try to go over the line and end it because you know you've had your last few big turns, you don't have a lot of good things planned, but other people haven't. Or you might be like, oh, I really just need to get to this one thing to get here, to get these points, get the contract over here. You might not want to move up on that track, right? So I love it in games when you can manipulate the end game trigger. This game allows that. Overall, the game is is really good. Uh, it's, 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 it's quick, it's easy, the mechanisms aren't hard, but everything ties together really well. On the negative side of things, the, the, again, back to the hacking. Again, this is that slide puzzle that you're either going to enjoy or not. It's just some people are going to like it, some people are not. If you don't like it, I, I'm not sure this is going to be the game for you. 
But even if it is, visualizing the hack puzzle, it can cause some analysis paralysis. Because you might look at the card on the table, you might look there and you might go, okay, if I do this, move, slide this down, and I, I slide this over and bring that over here, and then I rotate that, it's only gonna cost me one cube, and I think that's gonna line up. And sometimes you go and you do it and you're like, oh crap, that, uh, you know what, my brain didn't do that right. So sometimes visualizing what you can do for the hack can cause analysis paralysis, which makes you take long on your turn. Also, sometimes you might need to rethink your turn. Uh, like, cause somebody might hack something and then you're like, oh crap, I was gonna do that. That was my next room, I had everything planned out. Now I gotta figure out what else to do. And now they have a little bit of analysis paralysis. Cycling the hack cards. I like that you can do that cause sometimes they might get stale because either of the, of the hack cards might take three or four manipulations at best, right? And people just might not be doing it. And so I like that you can, for a turn, cycle it. But the negative side of that is cycling the hack cards also compounds the analysis paralysis because you might go, you know what? I'm gonna go to hack because someone is sitting on the next spot over there that allows me to complete the job that I have and I, I'd be jumping over them. So I, I kind of want to almost not waste a turn but go there to wait for them to move. And so guess what? I'm gonna cycle a hack. Oh, guess what? Ooh, a new hack came up. Let me see it. Huh, okay, it's a new one, okay. Two, well, with my special, but you know, and that now you have a brand new puzzle out there that you're looking at that might also compound a analysis process. So I like the puzzle personally, but I do realize some won't. And even if you do like it, it can compound analysis paralysis, which is why I think this game is actually better with the smaller player counts for that reason. Um, and also you can luck into a hack when cycling. You might cycle that card and go, oh, guess what? It's already done, great. I just get some points. That's not great either. It doesn't happen that often, um, but it can happen. I have seen it happen. So overall, those are the, the biggest negatives of the game, but it does not deter me from recommending this game highly. I think the game is tight. It's streamlined. Everything makes sense. Everything's tied together. The engine building is great. The arc of the game is great. The look and feel is great. That puzzle is going to make or break it for you. Um, and you should know by the end of this if you think it's something you're going to like or not. Uh, this has been the Game Boy Geek. Now, just because I like it so much, it is going to gain a spot in my gaming library, which I would say maybe one or two games out of 10 uh, get this, probably even less these days, but it is getting a saxophone serenade, so I'm inducting it into my gaming library, which means I gotta find something with this box size in this way to game that fits in the same category that I need to get rid of. That's always the hard part. So it's gonna get a saxophone serenade, so let's hit it. <laughs>《Toppers upgrades every game you play, and their 4.5 Kickstarter introduced the new Galactic Mycroft and Watson Game Toppers with interchangeable rail inlays, as well as new game mats, miniature gaming terrain packs, leg kit options, dining covers, accessories, and amazing package deals. The campaign recently ended, but it's not too late to pledge late at GameToppersLLC.com.